everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs, and I've got a beautiful card today to show you using the Fruitful Blessings. Um, this is my focus on my blog this week. I've got four projects total if you're looking for more ideas. I just love these cute little pears in this uh, set. Um, the little uh, crate is from the Rustic Crate Bundle, which I featured a few weeks ago, and I thought they looked really good sitting in that little crate. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna create the background first. And this is one of our new colors called Lost Lagoon. It's beautiful. So it's really subtle kind of blue-green color. And what you wanna do is to take this die right here and these two and cut out a bunch of um, Lost Lagoon pieces. Now, um, you can put adhesive sheet on the back of each of the cardstock before you cut them out. Um, that's what I did on here, so you'll see no messy glue. However, for the sake of the video, I decided we'll just use liquid glue because it goes a little bit faster. So I think what you need is about uh, eight of these larger pieces and four to six of the smaller ones. And I'm just going to put them all over my card base. I want them kind of hanging off a little bit and I want them all going in different directions. Um, we're gonna give it some time to dry while we're coloring our pears. And then we're gonna snip them off the edges. This is uh, a tone on tone effect, which is one of my favorite things to do on a card. Um, it's the Lost Lagoon on Lost Lagoon. All right, let's do this one. You want them all kind of going in different directions in the background. And I'm just putting a tiny, tiny dot on each of the, the leaves of the stem. Oop, that one I got a little bit gluey. A little bit too much glue. Remember that we're gonna put our focal point right here, so I'm not gonna to worry too much about filling that space in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's do one more, and then we'll use some of the smaller ones. Our adhesive, adhesive sheets are really great um, if you're like me and get messy with the glue. They um, turn your piece into a sticker and then you just peel off the backing. Um, but like I said, I was just really trying to um, save time on the video so you don't have to watch me peel all those backings. So I've got a couple of little stems that we can fill in. Um, let's see, I think we need a stem here. And we'll do another one, just a tiny dot of glue. We'll do one over here like that. And let's see, maybe maybe another one right there. What do you guys think? We just kind of want it to look random, but also evenly filled in, e you know, evenly spaced. Let's put one more right up here. Like, whoa, uh-oh. Well, he may have to stay there like that. Yep, that's, we want to cover up that glue, so let's just set him down like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that and let it dry. You need to give it a good five minutes, let that glue dry. All right, for our pears, actually, let's put our crate together because it needs to dry as well. I have cut the crate from Pecan Pie Ink, the two pieces. And you wanna fold these little tabs in like this, okay? And then I'm gonna take, again, my green glue, my Tombow glue, and just put a very, very light bead on each of those tabs. Oh, no. And then I'm gonna take, and you kinda of have to, let's get it off of our piece that we're gonna stamp on, you kinda of have to, really push down onto those pieces like that so that they're squished down below, okay? And then you wanna put something heavy on it. Let's see, what do I have that I could set on this? 
I don't really even have anything sitting here. Um, I guess we could use this ink pad. So we'll set that down and set the ink pad on top of it. It'll keep it from popping up and give that glue time to set. Now let's do our stamping. We are gonna stamp our pears in memento black. All right, now I am gonna use Daffodil Delight and Old Olive. I wanted to give my pears a greenish look, but mostly yellow. So I'm gonna take my light Old Olive and I'm gonna go around the edge. And I'm just gonna do one pear at a time um, because the ink, we're gonna to wanna to blend it together. All right, so now I'm gonna take my light Daffodil Delight and really just kind of pull that color into the yellow and work from the outside to the inside. Okay. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my dark and I'm gonna go in where those darker areas are and right under that leaf Okay, it's gonna be a little bit darker on that side and I'm gonna push that color towards the middle. That's gonna give us kind of a shine there in the middle. Now I'm gonna go back with my old olive and just add in a little bit more like that. Okay, so now let's do the same thing here to this one. Just kind of dot, dot, dotting that color there. And then we'll take the light and we're gonna pull that color. We want them to bleed into each other so that it's not so obviously a line of green, okay? And pull again towards the center because we want the center part to be the lightest. All right, now we'll take the dark and the dark is there really dark right here where these things are overlapping and then also along that edge. I'm using my brush tip um, on these markers. It helps to kind of flick out that color and blend them together. And then last but not least, we'll go back and add just a little bit of green like that. All right, so there are your pears. Let me put my lids back on and then we will do the leaves. Looks like I got a little bit of color on that leaf, but that's okay. We are using a, a much darker color to color in the leaves, so it'll be all right. I'm gonna use the light Old Olive first. Color those in. And then I'm gonna take that dark and add a little bit of shadowing in. Okay, so I'm gonna just take that dark and just kind of add a little bit of color towards the center down that line, that center line of the leaf. Okay, and then again, take your light and push that color out towards the edge. Leaving the very edges the lightest if you can. There we go. All right, let's bring over the machine, cut and emboss machine. And we'll get our die. And we're gonna run that through. I think, since I spent all that time coloring it, just to make sure it doesn't bounce out of the way, I'm gonna use a little bit of post-it tape to hold it in place. There we go, and there you go. All right, now for the sentiment, I decided to do a little fussy cutting. Um, now, of course, if you don't like to do fussy cutting, you could stamp the sentiment on the inside, or you could even just stamp it on a straight strip of basic white. But I do have a tip for you. When you are cutting out something like this, take your pencil and draw the line where you're gonna want to cut. This takes the guesswork out 
of fussy cutting. You can follow the line exactly where you want to cut. And if you make a mistake with your pencil, you can always erase it. But, you know, if you make a mistake with your scissors, you, you pretty much have to start over. All right, so I've got a very light pencil line. Hopefully you guys can see it. And I'm gonna just follow along with my paper snips. These are small and that helps to turn your paper, get up close like this in these little nooks and crannies. I'm also using my opposite hand to turn the paper. I'm not using my scissor hand really to turn. And I'm also staying right in the center of the blades. There we go. Let's see, I wanna round that off a little bit. There we go. All right, now you can go back with your pencil eraser and erase any lines that might still be there. Okay, so now we've got our three pieces. I have also cut out a little uh, label using our vellum basics. I use the polka dot here, but I'm completely out of the polka dot. So I thought, hey, look, that matches the leaves. So let's do that. I'm gonna start with dimensionals here on my crate. Okay, and we're gonna put this down towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna put a couple of dimensionals on the backs of my pairs down at the bottom. Slide them in like that and then squish them down. All right, now for this, I think, let's see, I'm gonna make my own dimensional. This is our foam adhesive sheets. Let's see, it may not be quite skinny enough, is it? Oh yeah. Okay, I've got that. And then let's see how we want this right there like that. All right, now let's bring back our card base. Um, hopefully we've given it enough time to dry. And I'm gonna turn it over like this and I'm just going to snip. You know what, let's get my little, I've got a little trash bowl here. Let's see if we can get them all to land in the trash bowl. They are sticking to my scissors because they've got glue on them. If you ever get sticky scissors, there is a, a substance, a cleaner called Goo Gone that takes all the sticky off. You can find it everywhere. I'm sure you guys know of it. There we go. All right. Oh, up here, we're gonna do these up here. There we go. All right, almost all of them landed where we wanted them. Now, last but not least, let's add this to our card front. A couple of more, couple more dimensionals. And we'll put that right there. And then the beauty of stamping up, we have matching ribbon that is exactly the right color, Lost Lagoon. And I'm gonna add a Lost Lagoon bow. Isn't that a fun name, Lost Lagoon? I like that name. All right, cut these ends at an angle. Grab our mini glue dots. And we'll put that right there. And there is your card. Beautiful color. Um, I think of this stamp set as a fall stamp set, but Obviously, this card could be used all year long, any time of the year. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this project. Make sure to click the link, go back to my blog, and visit where you can find a free PDF and two other Fruitful Blessing projects. And let me know if you have questions. Have fun stamping. Bye-bye.